Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. Our show focuses on workplace and workforce trends. We find the people that have good stories to tell about their workplace, that are doing unique and smart things with their workforce, or perhaps are courting their clients and treating their clients and customers in a different way. Our goal is to learn something in this program that we can bring back to our own businesses at some point someday, and certainly hope to do that with you and our guest today, who has a very unique and narrow niche in the marketplace. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment. I would be a fool to not acknowledge the crisis, the pandemic that has struck our society, that is hitting each of us, I think, with fear and uncertainty, certainly me. I look down every now and then as these days go by and I notice my hands trembling. I'm not real good with uncertainty. I don't think many people are. And as someone said not long ago, it's only when we're going to get tired of being afraid that we snap out of this and realize there's a new reality. And at this point, people are still hoping that their old reality may come back. And maybe by the time this show broadcasts, that old reality will be back. I don't think so, though. Fear and uncertainty are gripping things, and uh, we need to pay attention to what's going on out there. As much as it's difficult and it can be a downer, take a look at the headlines, know what's going on, know what the experts are recommending for your and my behavior and our group settings, etc., but then perhaps try to find a distraction. We can just spin ourselves into the ground if we focus only on the bad news and the uncertainty that's going on out there, and I think we're going to see a rise in the number of sitcoms, let's say, that are downloaded on Netflix or Amazon Prime or whatever it may be. We'll see a number of movies being watched as we're all sent home. My kids are all home from school. That announcement came late yesterday evening. Uh, We're going to see a attempt at distraction as this news continues to consume us. And as the CDC said late yesterday evening, for at least the next eight weeks, eight weeks. So, Perhaps this show, broadcast this Wednesday night, is going to be a distraction for you. As you're driving home from work, as you're sitting home, whatever it may be, let's talk about something different. I am not ignoring the thing going on outside these walls of my recording space here, but I'm not going to focus on them for the next little while, other than what you and I have just said and perhaps what may come up in conversation with my guests. So let's get into that a little bit. There are marketplaces out there where only the very, very, very elite exist. They are the most affluent people in our society, and we see pictures of them from time to time, not the people, but this product, and that is a big O boat, and I'm talking about a big O boat. Some of these people are hundreds of feet long. They are oil barons from Saudi Arabia. They're uh, software tycoons, etc. Well, here in our listening area, over in the Gulf Shores area, We've got a group out there that either that manufactures some of these boats, not the biggest ones, but some of them, kind of an elite product, but services many others. This is Saunders Yacht Works, and I've driven by their shipyard a number of different times on the way to Gulf Shores, and there's always some beautiful boats sitting out there, and I love nothing more. If you were to look at my Instagram feed, you'd see that I love nothing more than looking at boats. I don't particularly want to own one of these things, but I find them to be absolutely beautiful. And John Fitzgerald, who's the president and CEO of Saunders Yacht Works, will be on the line with me in a little while. They uh, maintain these boats. They service these boats. Uh, They are people that come from a long way to get their boats serviced. One of the things that I know about them is they've got extraordinary lifting capabilities for getting these boats out of the water so that they can work on them. I'll read you this real quick. 60-ton lift in Orange Beach, 150-ton lift in Gulf Shores, and a 60-ton trailer in Gulf Shores for moving boats around the yard. Uh, So there's got to be a customer base of his that travels a good long way in their big O boats that they need such heavy lifts to get them out of the water and be serviced. And what I'm going to want to learn from John is who these customers are. What do they have in common? Is it cheaper for them to remake their old yachts or to buy a new yacht? I suspect I know the answer to that. What types of skills are particularly valuable to him for his workforce that are working on these yachts? And John has a bit of an interesting history 
industry. John comes out of HR. It's very seldom that I've seen, in fact, maybe never, that I've seen someone who originated in the workforce at HR take on the president and CEO role of any organization, much less a technical and labor-driven organization like Saunders Yacht Works. I'm interested to see what got him into HR in the first place and what that transfer out of HR was that got him to this position of president and CEO. I want to learn what t- what trades he wants the best. I want to learn how he sees the world today. And it will be really interesting to hear how this current, you know, environment may impact his business down the road. So when we come back from break, we'll have John Fitzgerald, president and CEO of Saunders Yacht Works on the line, talking about what his business is and what they're going through. Here's a quick way to get involved. You can find us on Instagram at What's Working with Cam Marston. You can find us on Twitter, What's Working Cam. You can email me, Cam, C A M, at What's Working Cam.com. And at my website, CamMarston.com, you'll find the podcast for the show where you can either listen to it again or send it on to others. So we'll be right back in just a moment with John Fitzgerald. You're listening to What's Working. Think about how people really see you. The kid at the drive-thru just sees a coffee drinker. Please pull forward. Your local barista sees the person who loves a smiley face in their latte. See you next time. It's kind of the same way with insurance. Other insurance companies just see a customer, but a state farm agent sees more. They see you as a neighbor. Your state farm agent is here to get to know who you really are so they can help life go right. Call me, State Farm Agent Allison Horner, and Mobile at 666-1616. Hi, this is Cam Marston. If you're struggling with management, motivation, recruiting, and retention in today's generationally diverse workplace, my half-day workshop called Leading Multi-Generational Teams will be helpful to you. It's a leadership development course that teaches leadership skills and management insights for all levels of workplace leadership. I'll be holding a course open to the public on Wednesday, August 26th at the Mobile Chamber and invite you to attend or come with members of your leadership team. Seating is limited to 30 people, so call the Chamber ASAP to get pricing info and to reserve your seats early. This course is one my clients from all over the country have enjoyed and bring me back to deliver time and time again. It's interactive, very fast-paced, and lots of fun. Again, Wednesday, August 26th at the Mobile Chamber of Commerce, or go to whatsworkingcam.com to learn more. Is your business growing? Does your existing metal building need an update? Expansion? New roof? With almost 20 years of experience, Mosley Building Systems is the leading metal building contractor along the Gulf Coast. We are your local design build experts. From expansion to new construction or repairs, we can guide you through all aspects of your project. Mosley Building Systems works with each client to fulfill their vision. For more information, go to MosleyBuildingSystems.com. Listening to What's Working, I'm Cam Marston, and on the line, as I promised, is John Fitzgerald. John is the president and CEO of Saunders Yacht Works with multiple operations down on the Gulf Coast with some interesting tools that he's going to tell us about and uh, serving some interesting clients. John, thank you so much for your time. Welcome to What's Working. Thank you, Cam. Good morning. Good morning to you. I'm very curious, John, and this is something that uh, I noticed in your bio. And something that I mentioned in the comments prior to the show, you weren't on the line yet, but it's an it's a non-traditional route from HR into the president CEO position. I've never met anybody that started in HR and ended up in the president CEO position. Tell me a little bit about that route and maybe why you, you know, why you've taken this non-traditional route. Well, it's a long story that I'll start by saying I am married to the only daughter of the founder of the company. There we and go. <laughs> when I when I met Andrew, I was actually a school administrator. I was working as an assistant principal, and he was the president of Saunders Engine Company in Mobile, which was really a growing operation. And Saunders Yacht Works was just a small branch at the yard in Orange Beach that specialized in pleasure craft service. And he was looking as his expanding business had a need for an HR manager and 
I was very attracted to the business from, I, I love schools. I really enjoyed working in schools, but I also saw in the small business, the absence of bureaucracy, the ability to get a group of really knowledgeable people together and make decisions and do exciting things. And then I was attracted by what Andrew had built, a, a group of long experienced managers and leaders that had a passion for what they were doing and so much knowledge about how to repair engines, how to repair boats, how to do what they did as a team that I asked them for a job as the HR manager. I always say it took a lot longer for me to qualify as a decent son-in-law than it did uh, to, to be an employee. But we, we were about a year, year and a half talking uh, before I was offered the job as HR manager. Well, what was one of my questions is, was there any original founding members of the family still involved in the company? And that would kind of lead to you. Is that right? That's right. My, my daughter, oh, my daughter, my wife is his only daughter and there were no other family members involved. And so he, his father had started the company in 1959. So it was an exciting opportunity for us to keep the family business in the family. And once he and I got more comfortable with each other and developed a little bit of trust, we were off to the races. Now, I didn't report to him right away. I reported to uh, the company CFO and had to prove myself in the role that, that I was in. Um, and it was until, I'm trying to think, something like 2000. Six, maybe I'd been there for six years. So I was promoted to a vice president of administration. And then in 2008, they added the yacht services. And then in 2009, as the company president. Take me back to 1950, what did you say, 56 when the company started? 59. 59. 60 year old company last year, yes, sir. Take me back to 1959. What was the what was the marketplace uh, identifier that made the founder of the company say, "I think there's an opportunity here"? What did he see in 1959 that made him begin this company? Well, Mr. Saunders Senior uh, was a Navy, I believe. I know he was a military uh, veteran that coming back to his hometown and. Mobile was a thriving port. You know, they had, in World War II, was one of the top vessel production communities. And coming out of World War II, a lot of that was commercializing. And he was an engine repair specialist. And he basically opened a shop with a friend of his down on Royal Street, where they started doing specialty services for marine engines and that was what he saw as his opportunity and it grew from there how many people do you employ today we have 75 employees and a range of people i've looked at your website and the number of different photos you post of engine repair and interior outfits for uh retrofits rather for some of the boats if i'm using that terminology correctly you guys have diversified a great deal since 1959 huh Oh, yes. Many uh, iterations along the way. When I joined the company in 2000, it was really a top commercial service and rebuild facility for Caterpillar, Detroit Diesel and Cummins products. The company service technicians worked all over the southeast U.S., uh, actually all over the eastern uh, U.S., and some a little bit internationally, but primarily on commercial engines, on tugboats. Uh, any kind of uh, dockside uh, commercial marine equipment. And then, like I said, the smaller part of the business was the yacht services that was just growing up. There were probably 25 employees out of a hundred probably 30 at that time that were involved directly in yacht services. So the yachts are, if you could break down the business for me today in terms of uh, what is the the biggest part of the business, yacht services or uh, engine repair, tell me how it looks today. Well, it's 100% pleasure craft related. So the commercial engine business in Mobile sold in 2008 and we became the 
family business operation uh, in Orange Beach, and then we expanded to the, to the Gulf Shores location. But in that change, we were able to retain the relationships with MTU, which is the old Detroit diesel product, with Caterpillar, with Cummins, Volvo, and MAN, which is a German built engine. So we retained authorized engine dealerships, but just in the pleasure craft application. Yeah. So we were no longer working on commercial boats, but from that day till now, probably 40% of our business is related to engine and equipment repair. And then the rest of the business is the yacht yard services and the crafts that come with the, um, you know, with the traditional refit of vessels. Who is your customer? I suspect my hypothesis is that you deal with a very affluent customer who are coming in to get their yachts retrofitted, their, you know, their boats repowered. Is that the case? A very affluent, you know, top 1% of the 1%? That's correct. We do uh, benefit from the fact that Orange Beach, Alabama is a very attractive spot to locate your fishing vessel. So if you have a family and you like to come uh, use your boat and then your family can enjoy some of the other nice resort amenities that are available in Orange Beach, it's become very attractive for the sport fishing customer from all over the Southeast United States and then also Louisiana and a little bit into places like Texas and Arkansas, but uh, Tennessee Georgia, North Alabama, um, a lot of customers that keep their boats in this area and employ professional crew, but they just visit to use the boat. They're not actually residents. There are some. We have we have a, a strong customer base of vessels from 30 to 100 feet. So we see people that are owner operators and they run their boats, uh, but the bigger boats are typically someone who's still active in business that employs staff to take care of their vessel and employs us to do the maintenance and the repair work and then the refits occasional when they feel like hey let's paint the boat let's put new power in it let's change something around about the interior you know those sort of things yeah now there are there are consultants there are industries there are businesses that uh cater to teaching people like you how to deal with this very elite customer. You have your hands on a, a, you know, a a customer that people would fight over. And when we come back from break, I want to learn if you have any insights on what you've had to do to learn to treat this customer differently, how you distinguish yourself, because these people likely have the affluence that they could take their product a number of different places. and, And the bill is never, Uh, there's never sticker shock like there would be for me. I'm very curious about how you groom and treat these customers, and we'll begin with that when we come back. Folks, you're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. On the line, John Fitzgerald, the president and CEO of Saunders Yacht Works uh, down on the Gulf. We'll talk about the different locations when we come back. If you want to get involved, 251-260-8100. That's our unmanned line. It serves us both as a voicemail and a text line. Leave us a message. Let us know your thoughts. We'll be back. I'm David Nelson, brewmaster and owner of Braided River Brewing. We want beer that goes along no matter where the adventure takes us and that doesn't make us choose between great beer and drinkability. We're drawn to the Delta and united by beer, because to us, the best way to celebrate the Delta is to slow down and savor the moments and the beer together. Come visit our tap room in downtown Mobile and ask for us at your favorite bar or restaurant. Visit online at BraidedRiverBrewing.com. Investing. Connecting. Leading. Providing. The Community Foundation of South Alabama brings together philanthropic assets to make Southwest Alabama a better place to live, work, and play. We link donors to philanthropy. Working with you, we build communities. Contact us at communityfoundationsa.org. Human Resource Department spend countless hours on insurance billing mistakes, 
Obamacare rules, and compliance. Employee benefits serve the purpose of recruiting, retaining, and rewarding employees. We can handle all of your benefit needs with cost-effective products, employee enrollments, and handle your HR issues. Benefit admin doesn't have to be complicated. My name is Michael Cowart Jr. of the Cowart Group, and we specialize in helping businesses with their employee benefit packages. Visit CowartAssociates.com. Fitzgerald, the president and CEO of Saunders Yacht Works. His client is a largely going to be a very affluent individual and taking care of a, their most precious hobby, I would guess, which is their, their pleasure craft, their, their fishing vessel. John, what have you learned about taking care of this very elite client? Is there a, a specific way you've learned to treat them or to communicate with them that could be helpful to any of our listeners who are hoping to court this type of client for their own business? Well, I, I would uh, challenge one of the statements you made uh, at the close of the last segment. We, we really have to keep in mind that these guys got wealthy for a reason. They okay. understand what things cost. And there is not really an opportunity that I'm aware of that you can say, hey, this is just really a really expensive boat and you really got to pay a lot of money to get this stuff done. You have got to make a very sensible business-like appeal to them of what their value return is. And if you can do that and you can deliver on what you're saying is the value that they can get for doing business with you, then they will be loyal to you. I and mean, we have a lot of really great customers. I'm really grateful for the fact that over the years, I have gotten to learn a lot about you know some, some people I would not have met Otherwise, but it all starts with sincerity and the value return. And if you take the viewpoint that it's not your money, it's their money, you got to make it seem as though they're getting the value. You really have to and have to deliver on it. It can't be a um, you can't ever take the approach that, well, these guys got plenty of money that that will get you into trouble. Um uh, and, and, and run you out because that's really true. They employ, typically we work more with the customer's employees, whether they be a, a fishing captain or a, a vessel manager, business manager. I mean, they're in charge of a major asset for this customer. And so they have to turn around to their boss and justify the expenses. They have to budget and say, hey, this year we're going to get these major pieces done. They have to plan it. And it, and you got to be able to, to back that up. So when you put your proposals together, your quotes together, we do a lot of fixed price stuff wherever we can because, you know, it's expensive. But if it's going to be at the price that you quote and they can plan for it, then they can deal with that. If it's too many unknowns and it, Makes everybody uh, nervous, and especially if they have a sense that they're being taken advantage of, they, they, it just doesn't last. You really have to be able to talk to them because they, most of my customers have built businesses or are part of businesses that have a lot of experience with cost of labor, cost of yeah. Um, goods, cost to move things, cost to build things, cost to get things done. So they understand what those are and you just have to be sensible. That's a good point. You've corrected me and I appreciate that. It's a good point. It's not as if this money vanishes from them and they don't even know that it's missing. So you've got to right. really, you're very much beholden to the proposal, to the plan, to your justification of the cost and the value of that cost. Now, right. You did say they often have a middleman. That's my term, not your term. Their business manager, their captain, etc. cetera. Uh, how is that person selected? That's curious to me. What is a what is a boat captain? And perhaps that's a show for me down the road. Um, what is a boat captain? How do they justify their costs to these boat owners? So both uh, from the chauffeur standpoint would be more your traditional motor yacht captain, who's somebody who would be responsible to make sure the boat is ready to go when they're ready to use it and then oversee all of the 
repairs and services on the boat. And then also they may manage other crews. So if you, in the big, in the big motor yacht world, you know, you see below decks or some of these shows, we yeah. don't have a lot of those customers, but you know, you may have a, a, somebody who's an engineer. You may have somebody who's a chef. You may have somebody who's a stewardess who takes care that all the, you know, of all the, um, the bedding and the, you know, the, the presentation to customers, clients, um, so you have that. Our more common situation is really a guy gets that job because he's a good fisherman. Yeah. <laughs> and so he's a really good fisherman and he likes the fishing business and he makes himself available to the customer when the customer wants to go and use their boat wherever they want to use their boat. So they will be responsible that everything works when the customer shows up so that he doesn't lose time. His time's his most valuable commodity so yep. he wants to make sure that when he shows up somebody's there to start the engines somebody's got all the gear ready they got all the paint set they got fuel in the boat all the air conditioning works they get on the boat with their friends with their family pull away from the dock and they can go fishing for you know for a day afternoon for a few days they can whatever their plan is it's the responsibility of that captain to execute the plan John Fitzgerald is the president and CEO of Saunders Yacht Works. We're talking a little bit about the uh, the business that he's in, and we're talking about his customers. Keep going, John. I want to hear more about this. So I just was going to add, they're also responsible for safety and security. Yeah. So one thing to remember is these boats go hundreds of miles offshore, and they're chasing tuna and blue marlin and that sort of thing. But they also have the responsibility to know about the weather and know about sea conditions know about the tolerance of the owner for what they can do and what they can't do and make the decisions as the captain. They have the traditional captain's role. The captain, the good owners that hire good captains also entrust them to make the, the seamanship decisions, yeah. not just do what I said because I said so. A good captain will be able to say, sir, this is really not the day we need to go out or this is really not the condition to take your wife or your kids out right. in, you know, that sort of thing. And then and they take that very seriously. Let's talk a little bit about the business that or the services that you provide these things. And I saw that you guys have a 60 ton lift in Orange Beach, a 150 ton lift in Gulf Shores, as well as a trailer that can take 60 tons and move it around the yard. Tell me, help me visualize what a 150 ton lift can do. So the it's called a a straddle lift. Basically, if you think of a boat slip that a vessel typically pulls up to to tie up, we have a lift well that a vessel pulls into and a machine that drives out over the top of it. So it straddles the vessel over the top in the frame, and then it also has slings that go down into the water. So that vessel is lifted up by the slings up on the dry land and then driven up on the dry land and it's 150 ton capacity is just stronger metal beams and cross ties and cabling and machinery that make it 150 ton capacity and then the, you know the smaller lift has a smaller capacity how big how many feet long is a 150 ton lift boat I mean, what 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 size vessel are we talking about that you can pull out of the water with that 150 ton lift right about 120 foot vessel is what we're prepared for in gulf shores and the reasons for needing to pull that out of the water or what obviously to repaint the hull or something like that but why why else would you use that thing well that's right the, the vessels stay in the water year round so as they are used and something happens under the water then the biggest thing that happens under the water is marine growth so if a vessel is sitting still or even sometimes when it's moving, things attach to it. So it gets algae and then it ultimately gets barnacles or other things that slow it down. And if it's not used very much, that can grow on the mechanical equipment as well. So you have the propellers, you have the rudders, and they get growth on them. You also have screens under the boat for intake of water. A lot of the equipment's cooled by the seawater. Yeah. So... Those things get blocked up by marine growth. They got to be cleaned off. So at least once every two years, a lot of boats once every year like to come out, clean the bottom, 
there's an application of what they call anti fallant paint, which if you paint the bottom of the vessel with it, it will slow the growth down so that it doesn't um, get really clogged up with stuff. And then there's different treatments that you can do to the metal products as well to try to keep them as clean as possible. But it's prudent to have the boat hauled and treated at least once every couple of years. And all of the vessels that don't, you know, if you're too big to put it on a lift behind your house or too big to put it in a shed or on a trailer, those are the vessels that end up lifted in a boat yard. So 150 tons, to me, I'm not in your business, seems like a lot. And these ton, these lifts have got to be somewhat, I'm thinking, rare. Where is the next nearest 150 ton lift to you uh, that a, a boat owner could choose from? So there are large commercial yards like in Bila Battery, uh, downtown Mobile, that have either large lifts or rail systems that can haul commercial vessels. There's some in New Orleans. But in a pleasure yard where you'd only be around yachts and uh, pleasure boats, you'd have to go to Tampa, Florida, or I believe there's one right around Aransas Pass in Texas that uh, has 150 ton lift capacity. So you're you have to go pretty far in either direction unless you want to go to a commercial yard. Which lim- which kind of gives you a nice market niche. You're, you you dominate quote unquote dominate the norm the northern Gulf of Mexico in the U.S. Well, I wish I dominated. There's a couple of hundred ton lifts. There's a hundred ton lift capacity in Pensacola, and then in Alberta, floor uh, and uh, right up at Barber. So. There is a distinguishing mark to go from 100 to 150 tons, but we're we're quite competitive with yards with 100 ton lift capacity. There's only a small portion of the boats that can't be hauled with that 100 ton lift. But we like we like the fact that we have that uh, that upper end. How long have you had that lift? We hauled our first boat there in 2012. Has it paid for itself yet? Uh, I can't quite. Um, we don't do the math that way. So um, I would think it's paid for itself, but I've actually, that's a great question. I've never even looked at exactly how much money that lift has made us because so much of what happens in a boat yard, the lift is the beginning. Yeah. So then you have the boats up, you have the services that you do under the water line, you have the, the services that you the vessel, you have mechanical services. I mean, so there's a lot. If a boat's coming in for a, a full service stop, there's a lot of things that go into that. The lift is the way you get access to it. It's the reason why the customer talks to you. And the safe operation of it over time is what gives you your good reputation. But you also benefit from just having the vessel and, and doing all the other work. John Fitzgerald is the president, CEO of Saunders Yacht Works, Gulf Shores, Panama City, Orange Beach as well. Right, John? Yes, sir. We we only own property in Panama City. We don't have an operation there, but we are in Gulf Shores, North Beach. And when we come back, John, I want to talk about the labor. I mean, the today's marketplace, uh, there is a demand for talented craft labor, and I suspect you have that same demand, too. I want to hear what you're looking for the most, uh, what you could sell the most if you had that labor. Be curious about that. So we'll be right back in just a moment with John Fitzgerald. You're listening to What's Working. Community Foundation of South Alabama links donors to philanthropy, builds networks across eight counties, and builds dreams for those in need. Through our donors' gifts, we make investments that enhance our community via initiatives with broad impact. Working with you, we build communities. Contact us at communityfoundationsa.org. I'm Matt Armbruster with Ransom Ministries. We help people in our community that most others have given up on. Please donate your unwanted electronics to Ransom Recycling. We teach life skills, job readiness, and job creation through our electronic recycling program. We take anything with a cord. Find us at RansomMinistries.com or you can call us at 251-751-0044.
Life insurance is one of those subjects that make people want to change the subject rather than admit they probably don't have enough. I'm State Farm agent Allison Horner, and that's why I focus on how the benefits of life insurance actually live on by asking people to think in terms of life without having to sell the house insurance or life without having to give up college insurance. Find out how the benefits of life insurance can live on for your family. Call me, State Farm agent Allison Horner, and get to a better state with State Farm. First Protective is a multidimensional financial firm specializing in risk management. We blend all dimensions of financial services, offering our producers diverse products to create multiple revenue streams. If you're a life insurance producer or in the traditional investment business looking to grow your business, we can help. Call me, Jay Stubbs, at 251-604-7024 or find me online at www.firstprotective.com. We're back with John Fitzgerald, the president and CEO of Saunders Yachts Works. John, before the break, I asked you a little bit about the the talent, the the workforce that you have, and I'm curious what type of positions you're trying to fill. I suspect there are craftsmen out there that have a, a good niche in your trade, and if you get a couple more of those, you'd be able to do a lot more work. Am I anywhere near close? Yes, absolutely. We are very fortunate to have a veteran staff. We've got some great guys in the uh, diesel mechanic field. We also have carpenters and painters, fiberglass technicians on the craft field. And then we have what we call systems techs that work on air conditioning and electrical power and also hydraulic power. Basically, the systems guys work on everything that's not the engine on the boat. So all of those, we recently also opened up an outboard service division. So as well as diesel techs, we have outboard uh, technicians and we are really fortunate to have a great group, and we're always looking for more. Yeah. Is there one job that you'd love to have, let's say, five more people? What would that role be? The systems area has been the biggest challenge for us. We have uh, a big, seemingly a large pool of air conditioning people to choose from because there's so much of that training available. But a lot of those guys really seem to like the land side and the, and working for the companies that are in that industry so we have a hard time finding qualified systems techs that can do that air conditioning and electrical workforce that's our biggest need right now yeah what is technology doing to your business this is a standard question that i ask and i'm always interested or amazed by the answers what's technology doing to your business that would surprise me so there's certainly on the engine side all of the Diagnostics and diagnostic tooling is based on computerized analytical systems the same way you take your car to the shop now and they plug it up. They can check and see what's the matter with it. The system side is a little bit different, though, because it is much more of a hands-on mechanical. And and don't get me wrong, the diesel mechanics, once they do the diagnosis, they do a significant amount of hands-on mechanical work. But uh, the technology has impacted us from the standpoint of how quickly a mechanic can get information. So if he's in the field and he can get on his phone and he can look up stuff on proprietary websites, but also just Google searches on older boats. But we work on everything that floats, right? So it could be a 1970s model. It could be a 2019 model. And to try to find out information about it, the uh, ability to, for hand, handheld um, immediate interface with either experts in the field or the suppliers has really changed things for our technicians. I saw, speaking of technology technicians, your website advertised a 55-foot boat with outboard engines. Now, back in the day, and I'm certainly not in your business, you would never have powered a 55-year-old, a 55-foot boat with outboard board, but it seems more and more common today. Now, there are going to be a bunch of them back there, but is this the technology revolution that we're talking about now showing up in powering big boats with outboard engines? Is that kind of what we're talking about? 
Yes, I mean, one of the big changes, I'll say, of the last three or four years has been just that on the outboard market. The outboards are so much quieter and more powerful than they used to be. Uh So it used to be that a boat, let's say 30 foot and larger, was going to be inboard powered with diesel engines. And that style express boat is almost going away in favor of the center console with the multiple outboard. The guys that want to fish, they want to they go much faster with outboard power, and the equipment is so much easier to operate than it used to be. And with the multiple, the three and four unit installations, it's no longer, you know, the engines work together, so you either have a joystick or some kind of a, of a steering control, but if you turn left, all the engines don't turn left. You know, I mean, you might have three that turn left and one that turns right because they're working out the direction that you're going in. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they, they, have, uh, they have holds so that you can hold over a fishing spot based on a GPS setting. You just basically, it's an anchor to a location. Right. And then the, the engines come on and maneuver to stay on that spot. They dance all around. The boat never moves. But to, to keep the engine in place or the boat in place, the engines have to kind of work together and then sometimes work against each other just to go nowhere. Things like that are now capable happening all the time, and they're part of starting to become part of the expectation of the new boat owner. So I was interviewing a guy not long ago. You've said something that makes me think about a, another conversation who uh, manages the Hangout Festival in Gulf Shores. Right. And I asked him, hey, you've got a, these acts that come through, these musicians, and we hear all the stories about damaged hotel rooms and all that kind of stuff. And they have these riders. These musicians have riders that ask for some very specific, unique things from time to time. One of the things he told us about was one of the musicians, and he wouldn't tell us who, had the entire interior of their trailer. A part of the deal was that the entire interior of their trailer had to be covered in astroturf. Floors, walls, ceilings, everything. He wouldn't tell us who or why, but it was just tantalizing to wonder. Tell me what you've seen on some of the uh, vessels that you all service, that you're upfitting or replacing, that you look at and say, either that was just beautiful or, boy, that's just strange. Have you got some stories that stand out? Wow. I don't have one as good as that one. Yeah. I wish I had some better ones, but one of the things that we're seeing that is kind of cool and kind of sometimes questionable is what they're doing with the lighting. I mean, the lighting on boats now with the different colors that are possible with the LED lights and the ability to cast down these colors from angles and heights and even under the water with the reds and the blues and the greens. And now they have them that actually change to a music setting almost like a disco show yeah. um, there's all kinds of things that are not terribly expensive because of the led lights that people can do now that change the complexion of that boat at night which makes it more exciting and interesting to the owners most of the most of the interiors that we see are pretty traditional frankly i mean they're expensive some of them can be really really high end with countertops and wood veneers and some of the different surface coverings that are exotic. But for the most part, the uh, the kind of wildest things that we see now are, are done with the lighting and the ability to kind of make the boat more attractive, sexy, I guess would be the word you'd look for. I mean, it's something that people like a lot. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm, I've seen pictures of what you're referring to. And I want to finish up our conversation about Maverick Yachts out of Costa Rica. Tell us, tell the listeners about that connection. So Maverick is a company that has built fishing boats for a charter business, charter businesses in Costa Rica for probably about 15 years. And they built a great boat. It's handcrafted, cold molded, really something that has a great reputation in that market. They are looking to diversify and to get into other markets. And they, uh, we talked to them initially about the fact that they, their strength is in the boat building. It's not necessarily in the equipment side and the engine side, which is one of our strengths. So we thought we could partner up with them from the power 
and the equipment side, but also they wanted to get a product in the United States and they had nobody here to really stand behind it. So if you bought a boat in the Gulf of Mexico or in the Atlantic Ocean, you know, who would you call if you have an issue? You're not going to take the boat back to Costa Rica. So we partnered with them. We have built one boat together, a 39 foot that's uh, outboard powered, a walk around style. That boat's offered for sale uh, by us in the United States. And if it takes off and we sell that one, maybe get an order for another one, or maybe we build another spec boat. But right now we've done just the one and are hoping for an opportunity to do more work with them. Because boat building, just it's right up our alley with the, uh, with the repair and refit work that we do. And it's exciting to have an established partner like Maverick that has a reputation. A lot of people from the Gulf of Mexico vacation in Costa Rica, the bill fishing down there is exciting, and they know the Maverick name for from their charter experience down there. So this boat is just developed purely for uh, fishing purposes. This is not a recreational boat. This is not a, uh, there's no cabin in it or anything like that. It's a, it's a, it's a boat built with a very specific and limited purpose. Is that my understanding? That's correct. It does have a small cabin underneath where you can go and get out of the weather and even a V-berth bunk. Uh, but because of the walk around, yeah. there's not as much room below. It's got a really comfortable cockpit and because of the fishing and a helm area. And then you can step below it if you need to uh, you know, get out of the weather or need a rest break down there. Give me another uh, model or brand that the Maverick is priced competitively with. Am I buying a, uh, I'm making names up, but a Bertram, a Hatteras, a Regulator? No, uh, none of those. Um, gosh, uh, there's there's one that's really well known that's on the tip of my tongue. And I, of course, I'll remember it right after we get <laughs> off the phone. But it's a walk around style. So, uh, regulator is going to be more of a, a center console. Yep. This boat is the, different from a center console. It has the cabin below, mm-hmm. and it also you can, but you can fish from anywhere on it by moving around because of the walk around. So it's not like like the Bertrams and the Hatteras that you're thinking about would be more of an express style. A little harder to get out on the bow of right. those boats because they don't uh, they don't provide for the walk around space so do you manufacture the hull here that in the one that you've made did you all make the hull here or did you had that sent up from costa rica i know that's a very important part of manufacturing any boat is getting the hull right yes the latter they manufacture the hull in costa rica shipped it to us and then we put the power in the boat all the electronics uh there's a sea keeper gyro stabilizer and then also we do all the finish work. So all of the final paint yeah. on the boat was applied by us. I hope that goes well. I, I, I'm, I'm pulling for you on that thing. It sounds like a, a uh, fun new project and a beautiful boat. We're excited about it. We have it. It's down in Palm Beach right now. It's leased to a friend of ours who's a, a partner in the company, but we'd really like to sell it to an end user and get it out there so sure. people can uh, see how it fishes because it really is uh, – it, they're, they're fishing machines. They do great work with them down in Costa Rica. and be excited to get a few up here in the U.S. John Fitzgerald is the president and CEO of Saunders Yacht Works on the Gulf Coast. John, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Absolutely, Cam. I've enjoyed it myself. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. If you want to get involved, 251-260-8100. That's the phone slash text line. Or email me, Cam, C-A-M, at What's Working Cam. We'll be right back after this break with final comments. Do you sometimes wonder about different money topics, but struggle to find the answers? The Every Dollar Counts podcast with Gulf Coast experts Josh Knoll and Jay Stubbs is made for those folks serious about their financial plan and looking for answers. Josh and Jay dedicate their time to explaining the various services and products available, as well as discussing lifestyle and money interests of the modern day family. Tune in to Every Dollar Counts on Apple Podcasts and everywhere else you get your favorite podcasts. Is your business growing? Does your existing metal building need an update? Expansion? New roof? With almost 20 years of experience, Mosley Building Systems is the leading metal building contractor along the Gulf Coast. We are your local design build experts. 
From expansion to new construction or repairs, we can guide you through all aspects of your project. Mosley Building Systems works with each client to fulfill their vision. For more information, go to MosleyBuildingSystems.com. What's Working with Cam Marston is brought to you by Stella Artois Beer. Stella Artois is a perfect beer for celebration. Nothing caps off a big sale, hitting your incentive goals, or a profitable quarter like a round of Stella's. Brewed first in 1708 as a special Christmas brew, today Stella is a gift for everyone to enjoy year-round. Stella Artois. Find it wherever fine beer is sold. I want to thank John Fitzgerald for his time. I have always thought boats sexy and people roll their eyes when they hear me say that, but I just think they are. And I've said this before, my Instagram feed, when I'm killing time, I'm looking at center console boats. I don't know why. (laughs) Maybe I'm telling too much, but that's what I, I think they're beautiful. I just think they're beautiful. The beautifully designed boats, you just can't beat it. And I scroll through those pages and that's as close as I'm going to get to many of those models is scrolling through them, looking at them on Facebook. But uh, I just think they're beautiful. And John being in the industry probably rolls his eyes, said it'd be a lot different, Cam, if you depended on this business to pay your bills. And I'm sure he's right. It's always prettier from the outside looking in. But they've always seemed very sexy to me. Listen, let me add something real quick before we finish up this week's show. If you haven't heard them already, we've added two new shows to the lineup. They air at 1 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. They're live call-in shows of the what for the What's Working audience. We're focusing specifically on small businesses here and how to get through in this time of crisis. We'll have expert guests talking about banking, for example, attorneys talking about what contractual commitments we are you know, we can look at differently now and maybe an SBA person talking about the loans that are around the corner for small businesses like yours and mine. Our goal is to have people, in, I, I want to know about how to market cheaply. I want to know how we keep our name out in front of our customers, make sure our customers realize that we're still relevant inexpensively. And I have so I have a feeling social media will be a big part of that. So the new show will air beginning, uh, it, if you haven't heard it already, it's still very new to me. Tuesdays, Thursdays, 1 p.m., live call in with experts that we'll have on hand that you can quiz. They'll come prepared with some ideas. We're going to make them talk about actionable steps small business can take to keep the lights on, to keep going till this ship writes itself. And I hope you'll join me and be eager to engage in these conversations. Let's wrap it up real quickly with ways to get in touch with us. They are uh, the same ones as always, but we love hearing from people. Our Twitter handle is What's Working Cam. The phone slash text line is 251 260 8100. It's an unmanned line. Leave us a message or send us a text 251 260 8100. Email me directly, cam at what's working cam.com. You'll find us on Instagram at what's working with Cam Marston. Enter all that, one word. No apostrophes in Instagram, by the way. And on Facebook, search for What's Working with Cam Marston. Those are the ways you can see what's going on, who's coming up, guests we have, ideas, and we'll communicate with you through those channels if you wish. The podcast is available at cammarston.com. Go to that page and look for the link. We try to make it easy to find. Click on that link, and you can listen to it online or find ways to download it as a podcast in many of the different podcast services that are available out there. Folks, we're in new times. It's not easy. It's not easy. But we're in new times, and we're going to look ahead. And this Tuesday, Thursday shows are going to be very positive and optimistic about things we can do, not what we're stuck with, but things we can do. Thanks to John Thompson, show producer. Thanks to Kristen Ogden for arranging all the interviews. We'll have another show next week. I'll talk to you Tuesday or Thursday. Have a good week as best as you can. (music) 